Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. chemical sector. I'm joined by Kyle Lachlan, who's a Managing Director in the Chemicals and Packaging Team based here in New York. Kyle, thanks for joining. Good to be here, Mike. So you recently published an article that talked about uh, a year of transition in, in, in the sector. Maybe, what are our views? Well, we'll provide some context there. Well, my, you know, rating trends have been consistently favorable in chemicals over the last uh, two years. Mm -hmm. And that's not really surprising given that the sector is recovering from a very deep recession in 2009. What we're saying now, in contrast, is that we think 2012 will be a year of much more balance in terms of upgrades and downgrades. Mm -hmm. And to be clear, we still think operating results will be pretty good this year. We think financial profiles are in reasonably good shape. But we also think that, that financial policies will be start to become uh, a limitation in terms of uh, considering upside from here. Uh, in our view, companies are more focused now on M&A spending, capital expenditures, and shareholder rewards. And to us, this suggests more of a balance in terms of upgrades and downgrades in 2012. Okay, so, so the, the report, what you just talked about as well as in the report, financial profile, the expectations is it gets better, but at the same time, ratings upside is limited. M maybe talk about that a little bit. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, at this point, only about 5% of outlooks are positive, mm -hmm. and given what we've said about the strength of financial profiles, that may seem somewhat conservative. But it really comes down to financial policy at the individual issuer level. Mm -hmm. When we think about financial policy, we're thinking about a management team's objectives in terms of growth and shareholder rewards balanced against its objectives for its capital structure. Uh, at this point, we think the pendulum is swinging back toward growth and investment. Uh, so, you know, we think that improving credit quality from here will become less of a priority. In the, in the report, we focus on three areas, M&A, shareholder rewards, and capital spending. Of these, M&A activity is likely to be the biggest change. Uh, after very little uh, deal making across uh, 2009 and 2010, we did see a big step up in, in 2011. And we believe the factors that drove that higher level of M&A activity are still in place. So, you know, one of the things we published in the report that you referenced was a table that showed seven M&A deals that were completed over the last or, or pending uh, and announced over the last 12 months. Six of those are valued in terms of transaction value between two billion and eight billion. So fair, fairly large transactions. Sure. And you see management teams willing to stretch at this point to either, you know, pursue more specialty uh, product orientation, to, to tap into higher growth markets, to uh, orient, in, orient their businesses toward more stable end market demand. So we see that happening as we speak, and, and that's uh, part of what we're referring to. The second area is capital spending. We also expect that to be up across the sector. Um, in terms of aggregate spending in the sector, we're, we're predicting or we're forecasting about $20 billion in 2012 in terms of aggregate capital spending for the sector. That compares to uh, something for 2011 that's about 25% lower. So about a 25% increase in terms of our expectations for 2012. And the last area has to do with shareholder rewards, dividends, and share repurchases. In aggregate, uh, similarly, share repurchases are on pace to exceed uh, 2010 levels. We think about $8 billion will be a good number for uh, 2011 when all the results are, are uh, reported and that compares to about 3.6 billion for 2010. So, so a pretty big step up in shareholder rewards. Uh, in, in terms of dividends, uh, that's also expected to move up to about 8 billion in 2011 in our view. Uh, to give you a comparison on that, we saw about 6.5 billion in aggregate spending in 2009 during the downturn. So that was a, an area where management teams sure. pulled back as their businesses uh, were under pressure. Yeah. So, so one last question. With, with that being said, what, what is the outlook here for, for the U.S. chemical sector in 2012? Mike, we think all of this suggests more of a balance in terms of upgrades and downgrades in 2012. Uh, and that's really what we're already seeing in recent weeks, the, the, the kind of the upgrade to downgrade ratio starting to flatten out uh, across the U.S. chemical sector. Operating results are uh, expected to be a little weak as we see the, the, the rest of the fourth quarter reports and uh, demand has been more subdued in part because of the weaker economic uh, activity around the world in, in recent months, in part because of some inventory destocking that we think is playing out in the industry. 
and uh, we also think there's some seasonal weakness in the in the fourth quarter numbers. So that's that's uh, a factor, but we think the broader picture still holds up, and we think. Uh, based on our economist baseline forecast, we're likely to see gradual economic recovery in the U.S. Uh, we think that end markets for chemical products are recovering, in, including housing, electronics, consumer spending, and automotive bills are all heading in the right direction in 2012. And we also think the availability of low-cost natural gas liquids is a real positive in terms of petrochemicals in this region. So uh, that, together with a relatively tight supply and demand balance for a lot of basic materials and, and chemical product chains suggest a reasonably good story in terms of operating prospects, particularly in the back half of 2012. So, you know, to answer your question, we are balancing a reasonably upbeat, uh, upbeat outlook for 2012 against what we perceive as uh, more focus on growth, on CapEx, on M&A and shareholder rewards this year. And uh, to us, that suggests a fairly stable uh, picture in terms of credit quality and a fairly stable or an even more of an even balance in terms of upgrades and downgrades this year. Well, that's great. Appreciate you joining, Kyle. Sure. Good to be here, Mike. We'll see you again next time.